welcome to Drawing with Fire. I'm Valerie, your neighborhood pyrography artist, and I'm joined today with Hubcap, Hubby, Hubby. <laughs> hubby. <laughs> you're, you're Hubby. Hubcap. <laughs> See, it throws me off. So today, this is a new project that has a deadline August 31st, so I've got to get it started, along with everything else going on. So I wanted to show, because Zena, this is our big girl Zena, she is a big white dog and i'm going to show you the reference if I can. there we go in fact you know what i'm going to pop them all up because this is why i do the black and white the color and the sepia i make my patterns from the color so that i can see better and mark things out and then i burn from all three but the sepia gives me the best idea of how things are going to look and if you look at the top up here oh, we'll curve it this way there is a bright highlight I actually darkened the um, parts of her shadows because I wanted to be more dynamic but those highlights make her look like she's glowing so I need to mark those out in order to not confuse myself. Hey Spence, hey Amy. So this is what it looks like on my pattern. I, I know it might look a little busy, but <laughs> I understand what's going on because I did it. It took me a couple, it took me two days actually to do the pattern and then get it on the wood. So now it might be harder to see. Let me do that and see what we're doing. So I need to find my high highlights that I want to make sure that I don't burn those at all. In fact, those will probably have some kind of white added to them. And I have all my patterns that I used in order one more <laughs> in order to get this transferred because with the light one I need to be able to see her eyes. With the dark one, I needed to see where the different hair directions are separated. And then this was the middle. So I had to do all that and switch out. And when you see this, when I put a little dot on my pattern like this, this is so, because I'm enlarging, I'm printing larger than my printer. This is so I can realign it when everything's printed out. That's how I always do it. Now we're going to start. I do need one of my photos so I can follow where I want to mark out. See, I'm not going to fill in the whole area. I'm just going to go to the edges where so that it catches my ah, so it catches my eye as I'm burning. And since I don't worry about I don't have to worry about the chalk. They call it a white charcoal, but it's it's actually chalk. I don't have to worry about burning over this because there's no wax or oil. I guess I sharpened it too much. So I'm going to put those whites in. And this way, as I'm burning along, I, it's probably harder to see. I can see it. Because it, there we go. You can see it a little bit better. Hey, Sheila. Hey, Teresa. Hey, Pete. Hey, Greg. Hi, Emily. Hey, Joshua. Oh, thank you, Josh. I'm trying. We just need 5,000 subscribers on Sunday. Sunday was a big day. Grandbaby was born, too. So now I'll never forget when I made 5,000. It's so awesome. It always feels good to hit a goal. Alrighty. So I'm going to go through. And there's a lot of high white highlights that I want to preserve. So I know this whole inner area right here is white. And that's why I'm just going around the outer edge. Now, in fact, in the photo, because um, you took the photo and gave me permission to use it. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess. I, mean, this. I you have permission to use any of my photos. Well, I know. I'm just telling them I have We're permission married. to use it. Yes. When I put a ring on it, I mean, I got your photos, too. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> what I say is an odd thing to say. I understand what you mean. But... I'm just giving you credit. So this is Zena. When her coat, I can't. Was it springtime or fall when you took this? This is when her coat is starting to blow out uh, again. And she gets a little. She has long hair anyway. Yeah, she has long hair anyway. But she gets actually a little sad when her coat starts blowing out. I don't know if she's embarrassed by all the fur being lost or what it is, but she gets a little sad. So that's what the look is. There's definitely a lot of fur around the house. Oh. Takes hours a day cleaning it up multiple times. There's just so much of her. She has enough fur for three giant dogs. So this is when her coat's blowing out so it's all over the place and she's laying on the couch and she's a little, I wouldn't say perturbed, but she's wondering why dad's bugging her. I just woke her up. Yeah, you just woke her up. Not intentionally. Just, that's what happened. She saw me taking pictures and then she kind of scowled at me. <laughs> she always does that. Why are you taking pictures of me when I'm just waking up? You don't want your picture taken when you wake up. I haven't decided what I'm going to call this one yet. But she does get a little sad when her coat's blowing out. No, she's not the one that sounds like a seal. Either. No, that's Moon. Moon's a hound dog. Yeah, he's a Tennessee tree walker coon hound. Moon is like 100 and something pounds? Uh, he's probably about 115 pounds. Yeah. She's so, she's so small compared to me. Yeah, she is. I probably should have printed out smaller, but like the sepia photo so I could see better where the highlights are. So I'm doing this. It's going to help me to not get as lost because there is a lot of um, fur pattern switch up. So that's why I'm doing this. Because we have all different directions going on. This hair is going back. This one's going up and back. This is going to the side. That's going to the side along her back. Um, and then she's got her ridge coming up. So yeah, uh, trying to follow that fur pattern. Let's see. Okay, I'm still on camera because I know I keep switching my angles so I can work better. And then there's fur that comes off that I didn't place. Um, I haven't placed yet because this is going to have a dark background along here and I want her to glow along the edge because she does and with her laying on the couch on her blanket the light was coming in from the window down on top of her and that's why her face right here is darker because this is closer to the light and this is protruding out which is getting hit by the light, but this whole area isn't as much. Let's see here, how far do I want to go? David's in and, and barrel are here. Hey Barrel, hey David. I'm gonna get this in as quick as I can. I'm not going to put it, like I said, I'm not putting it everywhere. It might actually help if I untape my pattern. And just tape it to my board Whew. so I can see that as well where everything is going. So, this is a Trakel board and Birch, Raw Birch Trakel board. I really do like my Trakel boards. <laughs> The are awesome. Okay, so we've got a darker area here. So that means the fur is white up here. And this definitely is just a visual so that while you're burning along and you're focused and you're burning, 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 it's a, it's a visual difference to catch your attention. I know the light is making it harder to see what I'm doing. Let's see here. Maybe if I just... I don't want it too dark. 
I'm trying to put white down. Plus, there's a glare in my eyes. Don't want that. So let's see here. So I'm using all these references to know where the landmarks are in order to hit the right spots. And so I can burn in between to get depth into the fur while leaving area for the the white. I haven't decided what I'm going to use for the white. If I'm going to use acrylic, I think acrylic might be too um, overpowering if I did straight white. Unless I did make sure I did a darker burn so that <coughs> balance each other out. Right, so I get that in there. And again, I don't I wouldn't mark out with a colored pencil because that has wax in it. And it can mess up your tips and can be toxic to burn over. But chalk doesn't have those kind of binders. So they're safer it's safer to use. Now, I, you guys have, a, okay, I should have pulled the other, the original photo that has her hair back. I'm going to quickly pull her up on my phone so that I can see where the hair is coming out. I, I masked off in Photoshop around her so that um, I could keep the fur pattern straight. Let's see here. Come on. Where's my photo? Should have this ready. Yeah. I guess it's on my drive. Sorry about this. In order to go out, I do need the photo. Alrighty. Come on. Bye. Wrong drive. In order to get it off of Jason's phone, I had to. So, okay. So you can see right here where the fur is coming up more on her, and I didn't go into great detail. So I'm going to pull it up and make her look fuzzy. I can always go back and scratch out if when I burn the dark background it's um, it covers it so I'm not gonna worry about it I just need placement <coughs> see here so you can see better maybe if I do this there we go so we're making her fuzzier in fact I'll turn her this she way. Need to be fuzzy. <laughs> but that's what she is. She's I, fuzzy. I know, she really is. She's really fuzzy. Does she need to be fuzzy or no? <laughs> but to get this right, I do need to have it. Oh, Sam's here. Can't stay. Hey, Sam. But she's going to watch on replay. Well, thank you for coming by. And. She's going to watch replay because she wants to do a portrait of her dog, Ruka, and a ah. white shepherd. Oh, well, this hopefully will help. Yeah. Right now, I'm just laying it out so that... Shepherds have got shorter hair, but it would be more oh, like yeah. the hair that's around her face. Yeah, the shorter right yeah. here. Yeah. Because Zena here is a great Pyrenees. So, let's get that in there. I might be a little off on this part where I'm fuzzing it out more, but I think it's fine. It'll work. It'll get the aesthetic across that I want of her being super fuzzy. So it's not like anybody's going to sit there and count the hairs to make sure I got it in the correct place. Now, how many people have started World Biography Month? I'm already behind. But I have a good reason. Me too. <laughs> You're not doing it. I know. 
Our grandson was born on Sunday, but I have my whole pattern transferred. And I'm just gonna, I had thought about working on it today, but I said I wasn't going to burn on camera because there's some details in it that I don't want to mess up. Oh. And, Rick, hmm? Rick is a long haired shepherd. Oh, okay. Well, then, even better. And we have, um, how long is this? What? And somewhere is Kenny. Kenny's here? Yeah. David just welcomed Kenny, but I don't see Kenny's post, so I'm going back. Oh, okay. It's a Cartman letting go, huh? Uh -huh. <laughs> Sorry, couldn't help myself. Alright, so I've got the top fur. Let's see here. Just so I know where things are going. Barrel says she's on. Oh. Quit. Oh no. Sian's burner is completely broken. Oh. It only burns five minutes and turns it off. What kind of burner did she have? She has the Bryn Peter. Oh. Yeah. She has a Bryn Peter. Alright. Uh, I'm not seeing Kenny's. Yep. So these are the highest highlights. And I remember white fur is not white. Um, he really doesn't look white at all when he's in snow. He he looks yellow. Mm-hmm. Right. We'll chat. Several people in chat are congratulating uh, you on the birth of your grandson. Our grandson. Well, I know, but they're Thank congratulating you. you. Well, I think <coughs> they're graduating. They're congratulating us. Yeah, he. I asked him why he didn't sink his calendar to Grandma's because got so much going on. See, not everywhere is high highlights. I'm gonna bring this in. Trying to go with the direction of the fur. I mean, I could just mark it up, but then when I go to burn, it could get confusing if I don't follow the fur pattern. So I'm trying to make sure I follow that. Because there's a lot of detail in her. Alrighty. Let's see here. We got some high highlights here with the hair. Changes direction. Put that in there, and that's a shadow right under, um, right here underneath. Oh, David's got to go now. Hi, David. Let's see. Here. So there's claw there. There we go. There's just so many lines. I'm trying to make sure I get things in the right place, even though I did not transfer everything because it would have been too much if I transferred everything Let's see here. so right here on the top of her nose she has in the photo you can really <coughs> see the <coughs> pattern of her nose yeah. and how it's not smooth yeah. but I'm trying to f make sure I get that white line right here in order Let's see here. That's really important because it shows the break. Yeah. It shows the beginning of the fur. Put that in there. For now, that's fine. Let's see here. Every time I do a, a wolf or an animal, which I haven't done one in a while, but every time I do one, it's like the last one I did was a tiger. Yeah. But every time I do one, it's like ugh, all the fur. Well, I can do a lot of this, I think, with the 18M and the 18S, the spear shaders, because this is more groups of, of fur going in different directions. I mean, on her face, you do see separate hairs, but in going in groups, it'll look like the separate hair without being clumpy. That's I don't want clumpy. I don't want it to feel 
What's the word? <laughs> I guess one blank. Let's see here. Um, two uniform? Yes. All right, that works. <laughs> Let's see here. Yeah, she got hair all over everything. And then below her is a doggy blanket. I'm not going to go too heavy in all the textures of the doggy blanket. Because I think with all of her texture, it'll be too much. I think I'll have a little bit of it so you can tell it's a blanket, but it's not going to be overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. I'm almost done. I think as long as it reads its fabric, yeah. then it's, it doesn't need the texture. And when I go to wipe this board um, and get all the graphite, when I wipe it with denatured alcohol, all of these lines are also going to go away, so I'm going to have to put them back anyway, but it will be easier because I will have already done the rest of the burning, and I'll be able to see where things are at. Okay. A lot easier than what I got now. Uh, do we have anything on this side? Her ear has a little bit here. But I, this definitely makes it a lot easier. In fact, I had to do it with the owl because I was starting to, to lose things. But when I, as soon as I did it with the owl, I was like, oh, okay, that all makes sense now. And it was easier to get the beard under the owl um, by doing this. Definitely makes a difference. I don't care that it's super bright. I mean, once I do this, so the light's not hitting it. It's easier for you to see. Remember, all this is high, highlight blown out fur. That is along here. I have thought about doing a lighter burn and streaks at the top so that it looked like the light was coming down. I think that might not read right if I do it that way. I think if I just do this a dark background and then I've got her lights in a lot of places it'll read better. <sighs> Definitely fuzzy. Fuzzy fuzzy dog. But scratching isn't going to be enough. This is a piece that I'm going to have to add some kind of white media to it. I'm just trying to make sure I have it in enough places so I know. Okay. So this is the bright. And we got lines. This is actually darker. So do this so I know the dark is right here and then it blends out to white here and it goes back yeah. to me white fur can feel more overwhelming than black because you're worried about burning it too dark and losing the feeling of white but at the same time if you don't burn enough of it it feels splotchy and doesn't read as white either. It feels like it's kind of underburned. So finding that balance. And then when I turn my burner on, I think I'm going to start with her eyes. That reminds me. She's got, um, she's got a whisker coming down this eye here. Some whiskers coming here. Don't want to lose. And see, that's why I had to kind of enhance the photo because you you can really see the the shape of her face and how all the fur pattern lays. 
So, since I know I'm wiping off, I just add a bit more. This is is not a high highlight, but it is lighter. So that's why I'm putting it in. The girl says, so by adding the white, actually, she said, so <laughs> by adding the white graphite, does this prevent your burner from burning on the wood? Not graphite. Or this is or the chalk. Um, or is it so you'll sort of see where to not to burn? Where not to burn. So I can see where not to burn. And Emily Petit, or Petit, Petit, sorry. Uh, hey Valerie, do you have a video reference for how you do your transfers onto wood? Onto wood? Um, I have a very old video that I posted three years ago on transferring to wood. And then... Still good though, right? Oh yeah. Still good. And then also, actually a couple of weeks ago, when I transferred on, or was it last week? No, the week before. Two lives ago, um, I transferred onto paper, which is exactly, I did it the exact same way as I do wood. So, either one. And it's my pattern here, which I guess I can pop this off for now. Yeah, hit the right button. There we go. This is the pattern for Xena. And I used uh, my Walnut Hollow graphite transfer paper to transfer her over. Yes. Oh, we got a highlight along this ear. Don't want to miss that because it gives the shape to the ear. So I really don't want to miss that up. I think she has some darker fur just on the tips of her ears. So we'll do that. Let's see here. We got these. And then we got these. Tap, 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 tap. I know. I'm, I'm trying because it has a little harder time uh, drawing off over the graphite lines. Let's see here. With it angled up, you can see it, but because I'm down and the light's the way it is, I'm having to do it a little harder. So I know. We will do a quick test just to check to answer Burl's question about whether this is kind of masking the area so it doesn't burn. It's going to burn, but it's possible that some of the chalk will block some of the heat. So we'll test that on my test strip in a minute. Just so we know. Let's see here. Okay, so. I was just looking. We got 40% chance of thunderstorms today. Really? So this is dark, dark, dark. Oh, dark. We, need we need a... Emily says thank you. Oh, you're welcome. When I, my very first burning, I had no clue how to get it on the wood. I had no clue what I was doing. Um, so the other thing that you can do is take like a 4B or 6B pencil and cover the whole back of your pattern. Just putting a lot of graphite down and then flip your, your pattern over and draw over it that way. And that acts as graphite paper as well. You know, I was actually, I was really surprised that they taught that in, in uh, my drawing class. and. In college. I don't know why. Well, it's just, I don't know, it just seemed to me like it's almost, I think it's, it's almost like a do-it-yourself thing. I, I yeah. expected like graphite oh, paper to be I see like the mean. norm as opposed to like make do, you mm -hmm. know, but I think that that's good though to teach people those skills because a lot of people don't know that you can do that. Let's see here. It actually works really well. It does. Well, as long as you you lay out enough graphite. I have done it where there wasn't enough graphite, so it was... And gra graphite is really the best. I've tried charcoal. Charcoal is just making less. Oh, especially on wood. Charcoal will get into the grain. Yeah. Oh, 
Oh my god, a little bit of light down where her whiskers are because the light is bouncing. It's actually bouncing off her nose and her paw. You know, the, the, you know I hear you talk and uh, the more that, you know, I, I know this, but it's just a commentary that like 90% of art is understanding how to interpret what you see. Yeah. Like, how to understand what you're seeing, like how light interacts off of different surfaces and gets absorbed and reflects, you know, and like understanding that is really like the majority of, of creating good art, you know, like getting it down is, that's a skill too but it's more important to understand what you see because if you really understand what you see then you can do that like anybody can draw a line or a triangle you know because they they have those things in their head yeah but you know somebody asks like hey you know draw a portrait of a dog and that's like okay i don't know if i can do that but if you understand like how all those shapes fit together and and how the light interacts then it's no different than drawing a line or a, a, a simple shape you're just drawing a bunch of them you know but yeah. it's most important to see it you know and to understand it and that's, i think the more that you do the more that you you understand and perceive like i know for me when i'm doing a, a portrait or something like i'll do it multiple times and i'll see you know, a bunch of new things, like new refinements every time that I redo it, you know, and the more that, more time that I spend with a portrait, you know, the more that I actually see. Well, you're talking about redoing it over and over again to see more, but you figure... I'm talking about both. I'm talking about not, not just redoing it multiple times, but spending time with it, like, and taking more time. Yeah, and... But I've already drawn, and I've already drawn this. I drew, drew it a bit on the computer, but I'm not going to count that. So I made my pattern, but I had to clean up my photos. So I had to pay attention to what, everything that was going on. I made it my pattern, so I've drawn it once. I transferred it, so now I've drawn it twice. I'm doing this. I wouldn't necessarily call this part drawing, but I am having to pay attention to what's where and using my hand to mark, make marks. Not fully drawing it, but I'm still kind of creating a muscle memory of it. Yeah. And with using a pattern that's correct, that muscle memory um, helps. I know people may get frustrated with having to draw something multiple times, but in drawing it, in drawing it correctly, if you keep drawing it and you're drawing it wrong, that's the muscle memory you'll have, but going with the drawing over and over, with the photo over and over again like this, you're creating a uh, correct muscle memory. So when you go to burn it, it's easier to quickly recognize where you're at, what you're doing. I think it's interesting that you're unintentionally doing what Bob Ross did. What do you mean? Well when Bob Ross would do a show he would do the paint the painting and everybody be like oh it's so effortless which you know Bob did kick ass oh yeah you did. know absolutely absolutely and he makes it look effort he made it look effortless and he, he still does even though you know but um, but by the broadcast that was the third time that he'd done that exact painting like he had already done two preliminary paintings to nail down how yeah, he to do wanted it, so that when he went to the live that he knew exactly what he was doing but in that process you know he was learning more and more about you know that particular painting and so like you're unintentionally doing the same thing yeah you know, the time that you actually get to burning you've already produced multiple different versions of it like we could frame these as pop art you know what my pattern <laughs> yes i don't know don't know about that We'll auction them off for five <laughs> million dollars. <sighs> my patterns become more expensive than my art. 
That would be sad. That would be sad. Let's see here. I don't think I'm going to go much further. Do I have what I want for the eyes? So I can go ahead and get that done. See, she's got the whites of her eyes showing. I think she's got her iris and a small bit of pupil in this eye. Put that in there. And then over here, you actually see more of the whisker coming down into her eye than you see of the eye. But I only saw this not from my original photo. I actually had to lighten up a lot eh, so that I could see what's going on. But this isn't how light her eyes are going to be. They're going to be closer to the photo, but I need to be able to see to mark them out. Daryl just called you Valerie Warhol. <laughs> uh, I like to think I'm a little weirder than him. I could be dreaming of that. Andy's pretty weird. Yeah, I don't want to be him. <laughs> All right. So that is... I have his hair right now. I have his hair? Or you have his hair? I have his hair. One version of his hair. Yeah. All right. I'm going to get a haircut next weekend. Okay. This weekend. It's crazy. All right. So that... There's this top... The dark ridge. Uh-oh. Is right about here. What's wrong? Well, I think Teresa lost video. Oh, uh, I okay. Think we're fine. Okay. We're still here. Yes, we're still here. I haven't seen any buffering. Let's see here. That's the, white edge. the fur gets darker and darker as it goes because it's actually kind of folding. So I'm trying to make sure. Let's see here. He, I, I took um, several art history courses and during my education and. I could say definitively that there are many people that are weirder than Warhol. <laughs> like, actually, he's pretty tame in the scheme of things. Tracy Ehrman? Huh? Tracy Ehrman? Yeah. I've just been watching videos. I've never had an art history class, so I really lack in that area. Doubtful. You probably know more than me by this point. Hmm... See, when Valerie has a, an urge to learn something, she binges it like Sherlock Holmes <laughs> until she becomes the expert in it. I don't know. I don't become an expert, yeah. but I have a better idea of what's going on than I had before I started. And I'm like, oh yeah, I learned about that guy. And, <laughs> and she's like, yes, in 1962, he created the text of Frappahan. I was like, huh? I don't know that. But I yes, I am very big into learning. He's left handed and he likes the color blue. Oh, we also got to see our granddaughter on Saturday, Sunday. Oh, he's so she's cute. She's left handed, which makes her awesome. Yeah, she's left handed. She'll be three in October. She was drawing. Grandma can't wait. Oh yeah. Sit yeah, down when and, she finally gets to spend some time yes. with us, she's gonna She's gonna have a lot of art. <laughs> so much, so many art supplies. Like, can you even imagine? Like, <laughs> yes. most kids are like, oh, let's tear some chalk, go out on the sidewalk, or some finger paint, you know? We have paint, finger paint for. Yeah. Like, what would you like to use, child? Watercolors? <laughs> oils? Wash oils? Acrylics? You want a good graphite? No burning until you're 11. Let's see here. How old was Josh? Would he like to do some encaustics? <laughs> I haven't done that. But we have the materials. Oh, that's true. Would you like to weld some sculptures with <laughs> Grandma? That would be fun. Oh, I'd love doing that. Get her a little, a little baby welding mask. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. All the art we can create. Sounds like a Dr. Seuss thing. Yes. All the art that we can create. Oh yeah. So. 
We're gonna have to wait a little while for Ezra. I think. Alrighty. So I'm gonna put that down. I am gonna switch over to my 9M. It looks like you're testing the heat of that. It's not on. Not on. What were you doing then? I was just I was trying to think. By touching the tip, I can tell you which one it is. Oh, uh, okay. I was just making sure. My, my first impulse was, don't do that. <laughs> it's not even that's like, Oh, on. ow, it's on. Okay. No, I it's mean, not. that's what I would do. Oh, I was going to test the... Um, I was going to test... Back when I was, still drank soda, I used to test my air drift, airbrush like that. I to make sure it floated. <laughs> Pour a little Coke in the... In the... the um, Why would the you cup, do that? And then spray it in my mouth. Like... Yep. Oh, to feel the pressure? <laughs> yep. Alright, I am going to quickly... And Coke's um, corrosive. So it's yeah, also it is. cleaning. Although in retrospect, it occurs to me that I may have also eaten some paint. <laughs> I'm sure you've eaten a lot of paint. But nothing bad happened to me. <laughs> How would you know? Nothing bad happened to me. <laughs> Get what you're doing there. So I am going to check so we can see definitively if the chalk kind of protects the wood, acts as a masking. So I'm just trying to get enough down. <coughs> if, you know, if, if uh, Jessica is interested in art like that, I have always theorized that if a child was exposed to because, like, when you're a child, they're like, paint with your fingers, and here, use this crappy brush, you know, and these terrible paints. But, you know, you don't know that. You're just like, oh, cool, I'm having fun. But if you actually gave your child, you know, a child, like, really good tools and taught them how to use it. Yeah, that's how, pigmented and... How much of a head start, if, they're, if they were, had a creative bent... Like if they, if they were, you know, like all kids are created pretty much, but, but if that's something that they wanted to do, you know, like how much better of an artist would they be by the time that they were adults? Kind of the same, like a parallel of like getting your child into gymnastics at three, Yep. you know, like. You, as long as you always keep it fun, or the child will lose interest. That's true. If it if it becomes work, then you, you don't want to be that person. No. Like you call that a mountain? That's terrible. Try again. Try again. No cookie for you until you get that mountain right. Yeah. No, I could never do that. You want me to be sad? <laughs> Why do you want me to be we're sad? We're totally joking. Why do you hate me? <laughs> Why? Why won't you create what I'm asking you to create? All I want to do is live out my fantasies through your life. Ugh. No, we wouldn't do that. Oh, God, no. But, no, no, no. but our, our grandchildren will actually have access to whatever oh, they yeah. want. And um, with the girls, when they were growing up, I always like encouraged them to, to draw. And um, I experimented a little with that, but they weren't really motivated to do that yeah like I, I taught Corinne how to draw dragons and I just showed her like line by line like do this now okay now do this and she did a, a very actually a very passable dragon in the style that I you know do that was um that was more advanced, you know, so she was totally capable. Oh, they're, they're definitely capable. Okay, it does look like it actually masks it a bit. And I'll try it one more time. And I am burning over. Ah, camera's right in my face. Let's see here. Wow. Yeah, Beryl says she's got more art supplies for her grandchildren than anything else. Did I already say that? No. Okay, good. So I'm a little worried about my painting. Oh. Um, Emily says, my dad used a magna doodle to teach me to draw. You know, when I saw magna doodle, I heard the song in my head from the commercial in the 80s. Magna doodle. I didn't um, have any of that stuff. I didn't either. I had, I had a big, um, uh, 
disposable pencils. Yeah. The ones that had pencil lead. But I got those. And I did a lot of art with pens. And then I I think I had some colored pencils. But they were like Crayolas. So. so it does look like the chalk will act a bit like a mask. Like you would use in watercolors or colored pencils to, to mask off an area and color around it. With a, so it does look like... I'm do one more thing. So Beryl says that she has a daughter and a son-in-law who are artists. Hence mm -hmm. the supplies for the grandkids. Huh? Smart. Yeah. Greg says, yeah, I have supplied my granddaughter. Marley a bunch. Loves to draw. What's funny here, it's not, not Greg's fault, it's my glasses. Yeah. I saw Marley and it looked like Marky. And I saw a bunch, and so immediately my mind went to Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch, <laughs> and I, that was where my brain went, and I was like, what does your granddaughter have to do with Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch? <laughs> so, just insight into how my head works, totally fine. <laughs> we tend to have those this communications all the time, though. That's true. Alright, so I am burning directly over the charcoal pencil, which is chalk. I'm running dry. And you might want to do your clue. It's already 1147. Okay. Why are we buffering? <laughs> That's kind of mean. Me too. Alright, we're done. So, I erased the chalk. I burned directly over it. No. I did not. Not really. Um, mask it. So I think because I was kind of burning around like I would fur around these lines, that's why it stayed cleaner. But for burning directly over, no, it does not act like a mask. Alrighty. Let's turn that off. Let's switch pens. So sorry about the buffering. I don't know what happened there. It's still catching up. So. Uh, um, <laughs> no, Pete I, wants to know if you've been at the methylated spirits again. No, I think that's just that's just <sighs> he can't just hold his liquor. Paint, all the paint that I ate when I was testing my airbrush. He can't hold liquor. I don't know why, but it is still buffering here. Uh, you. I see here. I'm oh, waiting yeah. to see. No, see, my hand just moved, so it's not. It's a tablet that's supposed to be. Okay. Yeah. I'm not going to worry about it. Um, I'll watch up there. Okay. But I'll read the chat here. Um, so Val says I should do the hint for the uh, for the celebrity piece that Valerie's going to be doing. And make sure you're loud. Just for that, I'm going to be quiet. <laughs> you're sitting so far away. I'm right here. I've, I've never moved, and they've already confirmed that you that they can hear just fine. Do you want me to be up on the mic like NPR? I'm curious like, to see what it sounds like. Like today, Valerie is doing the Burning Museum. <laughs> Our sponsors today. Are we don't ready. have sponsors. Nobody wants to sponsor me. Um, okay, so the hints for the celebrity portrait that Valerie is going to be doing. Okay, I'm going to recap the ones that we've gone over. So this is a dude not a woman, Come but on. a dude. Hair is an iconic part of their style. They're alive. They're not dead. They're not a musician, but they are in entertainment. So those are our past clues. And the current clue for this week is they are on American television. And I, I want to specify something because I, I don't think it's too specific okay. but when we say American TV um, I want to specify that it not uh, not the like old school networks so not when I say and the reason why I say that is when a lot of times when people think of TV they think of like oh NBC ABC CBS you know like those guys yeah. like that's television like that's what I think of because that's what I grew up with. Because you're old. I, uh, <laughs> let me get my cane. Um, 
So when we say TV, we're not talking about that kind of TV. So not network TV, but definitely TV services. And on, so it's an, he's on an American TV service, in which there's a ton of those. So good okay. luck. Okay. Anyway, that's it. And let the guessing begin. Yep. Because we're almost done with this live. Yep, we're almost done with the live. And remember, we're giving away two prints, one for chat if somebody gets it in chat, and one in the comments on replay. So if you're watching this on replay, please comment and guess, because you have a chance to win as well. So yeah, uh, Teresa, uh, David Letterman would be on one of those networks, so that's... Well, he's not on any of them right now. Well, not anymore. But he, but he does have an iconic hair. He's got a beard down to the middle of his chest now. And he's bald. Or really short hair. He looks so different. He does. He yeah. doesn't look like him. Alright. Philip's here. He says, Dang, hey, I am late. Very late. Kind of the white rabbit. <laughs> um, he is our white rabbit. So my... So Pete says, So my guess if Jay Leno was wrong because of the TV service. Hmm. See, you, get, you, hmm. you gave... That was an extra hint. It was an extra hint. It was an extra hint. I know, hint. but, oh, but it's I'm still a very it. broad field. If I pronounce words, it'll be like I'm uh, giving them more hints, but then it's not because it's just red herring. Like a broad hint. <laughs> what are you doing? I just threw them off the set. <laughs> He's trying to build up this eye. Uh, Again, everybody can't still guess. And I've decided that if you guess correctly, we won't tell you here, but if I can contact you, I will. <coughs> Excuse me. That way, um, and that, and how would you, you don't know? have to wait to find out. Yes, and how would you know if you didn't guess it? Well, on our live next time, we would say some, next clue. someone's guessed it. Oh, yeah. Someone's guessed it. But we'd still continue to give clues until the, you know, until both platforms have gotten yes. their winner, and then we would say, "No more guesses." And tell you, and tell even though I won't be able to start the piece. For... I suppose. Well, I suppose we could continue guesses just for fun. Oh yeah, for yeah. fun. As long as people knew that. Yeah. That they, somebody already won. Yeah. So we'd have to announce that several times. So what kind of guesses are we getting? Uh, okay, not confirm nor deny. <laughs> so Will Ferrell, Christopher Lloyd, Bozo the Clown. <coughs> uh, Teresa, I will put this out here for Valerie right now. Uh, Valerie does not like clowns, and so I don't. Valerie has a big issue. With I, I don't think that big there's issue. any clown that she's really no. truly comfortable with. So I can't imagine her spending. Hours upon hours. hours staring at it. Oh, hours. No. So. so. No, nobody has to guess, guess a clown because. Well, that's almost like a free hint. So yeah. No clowns. No clowns. I'll just put that down there right now. Oh, so. The free hint. No clowns. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely no clowns. And we're not talking about personality clown. No. We're talking about actual circus clowns. Clowns that wear makeup. I don't even think you like mimes, do you? Oh, they don't bother me. Really? No. Because they have a different feeling to them. Yeah. Spence uh, hates clowns, too. Uh, You're all right, Spence. Uh, yes, Pete, it is out of the question. Which, oh, God, no. Which I... I hate when I see those pop up on my feed. I know people are doing artwork, and they do a wonderful job, but I hate, hate when that pops up. And and I I have seen the original series. I have not seen any. With, you know, it was on network TV like a long time ago. And oh, I remember. It was like 90... 1991 it was on network TV. I rented it. We were uh, I, I was in the military at that time and I rented it me and one of my soldiers and we watched it and that was like that was some 
That was some scary stuff. That was we, some scary stuff. We, like we, was your soldier sitting in your lap by the time it was done? No, no, but, you know, we had separate barracks rooms. We watched it in my room, and then, like, later on, we ran into each other, and, like, you, you okay? And like, no, man, it's <laughs> dark and scary. Um, grown men, you know, grown scouts. Men. But, um, grown army men. Yep. Yeah. So, but I, I also got to see the remake. Uh, last year, I went with one of my friends, not Valerie. Oh, did you? Yeah, I forgot. George. Oh, that's right. Yeah, and um, I don't know if I will go see the I, if if I can. Who would you go with? Cause... I would probably go by myself. I don't have anything else to go with. Oh, I ain't going. Go in this, to, I ain't going. I'm not gonna go in the theater with you blindfolded. <laughs> <laughs> I think just Are we it, there yet? Are just we hearing there? it would traumatize you. Uh, but I really appreciate it. I was on the fence about it. I was like, why are they redoing this movie? But then, but then as soon as they like, because the original was set in the fifties, the first, but they set the the remake, so the kids were back in the eighties. So I was like, oh, this is my speed. This is like homecoming for me. Like I could see eighties stuff now. But uh, it looks like that the the next movie is also going to be good. Like I really liked the way that they redid it. I thought that they did the first one a justice. Like they didn't. I don't feel like that it, it negated the first one. I, I feel like it was a different version of it that was done well. So uh, I am looking forward to it. And I, Absolutely. Not. I recommend it only if you're okay with clowns. But I tell you what, that is a freaking scary clown. I don't care how nice of a Norwegian night, you know guy he is. He's, Who he's, plays the clown? He's in, I forget what his name is, but he's he's pretty freaking scary as a clown. Oh, I'm not interested. In any way. Yeah. In but, but it's well done. It's very well done. Like, it's not... Like, a lot of times, I think, when remakes are done, they, like, miss the mark so far, and I, I feel like that they honored the source material in this case, so... You know. Oh, I, I remember what I wanted to say. Oh, well, Amy has to go. Well, I'm about to go, too. Bye, Amy! Um, over in the Facebook group, Drawing With Fire... Biography group. Yep, that's what it's called. There's a link down in the description if you're watching it on replay. And you haven't been to the group yet. I just uh, activated Facebook mentorship in the group. What the heck is that? It's a one-on-one -on -one where people can say, okay, I want a mentor or I need a mentor. And they come together one-on-one -on -one through Messenger and they work together uh However, the person needs it. Oh. So, um, Facebook said it's about an average of an hour a week working with that other person. I have not set up a profile for that yet because I have so much to do. So much to do. Uh, I thought so I can't mentor right now. I thought we were getting hooked up with a Facebook mentor service where, you, <laughs> where you just somebody shows up with a breath mint. No. The fresh idea. No. But this way, um, if you're looking for specific help, if there's somebody in the group that you're friends with or, or they do something that you like art-wise, burning-wise, and they have signed up to be a mentor, then... It's definitely a way to help each other out, especially the person asking for help. It's pretty cool. Yeah. It doesn't cost anything, so you don't have to worry about that. And I'm pretty sure you could even, as part of the mentorship, decide on doing a critique of the art. Hopefully I've done enough of them that would help other people on doing it. Um, so, yep, that's there if you're interested. I don't think I'll bring back critiques until at least October. Oh, you are pretty busy. I am pretty busy. In fact, I thought about... I have concerns about Valerie being so busy. <laughs> She's like so busy right now. I know. I know. I thought about uh, taking all of September off from YouTube, but I, I would miss these guys. I, I do know I need to cut the time down. And we're already at an hour. Yeah, I thought we were going for like 30 minutes. Well, I started burning because I haven't even turned my burner on in over a week because I was working on patterns and everything between World Pyography Month and Xena. Just patterns alone took me a week to get it right. So do we have any questions about marking out the wood like this so that 
There we go. I'll get a glare so that it's easier to see so you don't feel like you have to go necessarily uh, scratch back if you've got some of it marked out. Hopefully that helps. It helps me. It's a visual. Um, in fact, once the cameras are off, I can bump up my chair so I can sit higher and not have a camera right here in my face. It's like right, right here. Right here is the camera. And, and four, less than four inches away is my nose. So I'm having to, to look around the camera to work. So if we don't have any other questions. Yeah, I, no evil clowns. No evil clowns. Not happening. Will never happen on this channel. You never have to worry about that. Hmm. And that's our 100% <laughs> no evil clowns guarantee. <laughs> and don't forget. <laughs> don't forget. There we go. You're awesome. You can do this. You're a... You're a pyro artist. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I could speed that up. <laughs> okay, guys. Happy burning. Bye. Bye.